So there's two things going on with him that concern me as a fan. And I, you know, I'm a huge Jalen Brown fan. Um, but the KD trade rumors popped up last summer and the team never publicly said, we're not trading Jalen Brown. This is stupid. Why is this out there? And I was doing podcasts at the time saying they should come out and say, this is bullshit. We're not trading Jalen Brown. We want to build around Tatum and Jalen. But in the Celtics fan universe, it became a big debate. Would you do this? Wait, that's crazy. You wouldn't trade Jalen Brown for Kevin Durant. He's one of the 15 best players of all time. So that became a whole dialogue that I think he was really aware of. And I, I don't think it was ever kind of shut down to his satisfaction. So you had that piece. And then you had the Adoka piece, who was somebody that I think he really liked playing for. And I think the lack of transparency about how that was handled, which I think from an organizational standpoint, they couldn't really be that transparent because I think there was some HR stuff and some legal stuff. So the details were a little sparse, even for the players. But I think those two things together put this the start of the season, even though the Celtics were playing well, it, it just gave it a weird vibe. And now, now that they're not playing well, it's starting to come out. There was a New York Times piece last week, an interview with him that he had, he had some tough quotes about the city of Boston and the fans. And then in this piece too, same thing. It seems like he's struggling with his identity as a member of the Celtics and whether, you know, the, the loyalty factors and then you go backwards with the history of the franchise. Ray Allen, that's why he left. They were going to trade him. He found out they are going to trade him in uh, 2012, ends up signing with Miami. The way Isaiah Thomas was treated in 2017. Um, I think these guys are aware, like as great of an organization as this is, there is that the moment we can turn you into a better asset, we might. And yeah. it does seem like it affected him. Well, there's a third thing to that, Bill, which is all of that stuff you talked about going on in the summertime, that goes on weeks after he led the uh, he helped lead the Celtics to a to a title or not to a title, excuse me, to a finals run. And yeah. he's thinking, hey, I, I, this is the this is the best team that, sh that we have had in years, counting the times where we the years where we had Kyrie. We got I got us to the, help get us to the finals alongside Tatum and Smart and M.A. with this guy. And now you guys are talking about trading me on top of the fact that I was a rookie when you guys did what you did to Isaiah Thomas. Um, I remember seeing that firsthand. I'm speaking in, in uh, you know, for for Jalen in this, and he's seeing this world where, you know, I might not, I, I am a, I am a asset in, in involved in the institution rather than somebody that is a partner and trying to get us titles. Um, and it's funny because it didn't really make the piece, but uh, to your point about the New York Times article and his relationship with Boston, it's interesting because he already came when I talked to him. Um, he had already come in with the notion. Um, of, uh, you know, just having just just feeling weird about going to Boston based on ba on all the things that he heard, um, just in past baggage and things like yeah. that, past baggage and things like that. Um, so he was already getting that. And I feel like his time in Boston has been just it's been filled with conflictions because, you know, first off, he thought that he should be a starter right away. And he did start in the beginning, but his time, his playing time would dwindle. Um, and, you know, he's over here looking at uh, ben Simmons in Philly. He's looking at um, J uh, uh, Ingram. And he was in L.A. at that point. But he's comparing himself to these other guys. Like, I think I'm better than them. Why am I not getting this opportunity? And all of these things are happening on top of the fact that he's getting dangled for when Anthony Davis is on the market. Hey, there's Jalen Brown. He's a good asset. Or when Kawhi Leonard is there, he's always, um, you know, being Paul George dangled. was another one. Yeah, they, yep. he was in every, he was always the one that got thrown in a rumor, whether it was true or untrue. I think from his standpoint, especially with the KD thing, I think they made a real mistake organizationally, not just coming out right away and being like, hey, we're not trading Jalen Brown. We love Jalen Brown. We want to build yeah. around him and Tatum. Those are our guys and that's it. Don't believe any yeah. stories about this. But they never said yeah. anything. I thought, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was well handled. It, it was, I don't think it was either. I mean, considering the fact that you at least publicly say you consider him a, uh, a franchise star. And I think, I really do think um, this summer was a big, big turning point because it was yet another time after he is a friend, after Jalen has become this franchise corner cornerstone and then to be in trade rumors. Because it's one thing to be a young guy and be in trade rumors because that's just the game. But when after you lead a franchise to a, to a tie or to a, I keep saying title, every time, if you lead to a, the a franchise to, to the finals, you expect to have some level of respect and, you know, 
that Kevin Durant thing happened a week, a couple of weeks after that finals appearance. Oh, and, yeah. And he's thinking like another person you guys think is better than me. On top of the other other things that I other conflictions I have with this organization, so it's 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 been a tough go for for Jalen and uh, you know it well, also wait, just, wait to be fair and to be fair on that trade thing, we don't know if they ever talked to the Nets about an actual trade. But the problem is yeah. it was out there that mm-hmm. they were talking or they were circling, and that's when you just have to squash it. And the fact that they didn't squash it in any way and just let it kind of linger. And yeah. then become a debate within the fan base and on the media and on talk radio. That's where I think I I think they lost the narrative a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And now it's you know, and this this starting to come out as they try to make another playoff run. You know, and this is just going to be it's going to be a tough thing overall for the Celtics. And it's always is something that tends to happen with them. Um, you know, say what you want about other organizations, but the Celtics are getting a bit of a reputation that they don't take care of their stars, which is something that the rest of the league sees. Now, they develop really, really well. They they draft really, really well. But I think the next step for the Celtics, and they have a newer regime. This is not the Danny Ainge regime, but they have an opportunity or what they should be doing is showing the rest of the league, no, nah, we take care of our stars within the fabric of this organization. And, you know, they're kind of fumbling the ball on that, at least publicly. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I mean, Danny left... I think Danny had the reputation. It was always the joke of Danny would trade his mother if he could get five more wins. And that was just the mentality that nobody was safe at any time. Um, yeah. But he hasn't been there for a year and a half. And that's that's what was so confusing to me as as a Celtics fan and somebody who's followed this franchise for a long time that, you know, Brown already had enough baggage with the fact that Tatum was a little bit of the favorite son, right? Brown is a little mm-hmm. bit of a middle child syndrome with Brown and it's always been Tatum. Tatum is the most popular guy in Boston. He is. Yeah. Um, he's the most popular athlete. And once Brady left, Tatum really last year became the guy. And Brown has been, you know, his sidekick's the wrong word, but like his, his running mate. But it you was always what? Tatum. I, I, and I, I always it, compare it to a uh, tribe called Quest. Like it's Tatum is a, uh, is Q-tip and, and Jalen Brown is five dog, right? Like five dog is the one, like he, you, he can rap with anybody, but Q-Tip is always the face of Tribe Called Quest. And I, I really got that, that comparison when I, when I saw, when I went out to Boston that I think Jalen is really, really respected. And I think people really know what Jalen brings to the table, but you're right. Jason is the one. <laughs> 